This video introduces the viral browser-based topology editor, which provides an alternative workflow for creating and editing topologies. An alpha version of the editor is available in the November 2015 release of Viral. The editor can be accessed through the user workspace management feature, port 19400 of your Viral server. The editor will appear when you click the Launch New Simulation button and then click the Editor button. You can use this as part of your workflow by accessing a file through Git or by loading it from the file system and then clicking the editor. In this example, we're going to create a new topology from a blank file, so we can click the Editor button directly. This opens the editor in a new tab and opens a synchronization back to the user workspace management. We can add and connect nodes by clicking the Add and Connect Node button. This provides a list of the nodes that we can add to the network and options to connect the nodes. Let's start with a simple triangle of IOSV nodes. We click the IOSV button to select the node type and then click on the topology to add the nodes. We can use the Auto Connect feature which automatically connects nodes in the near to each other. We now run Auto Netkit to build the basic configurations and can click on a node to view the node context menu. In this, we can see the configuration for the node has been generated. And by clicking sync, we load it back to user workspace management. Here we can use the launch simulation view to preview the file and we can see our triangle. We could now launch the topology as per normal. Let's now create a larger topology. We click clear topology to create a new blank canvas. And let's switch into presentation mode to get a full screen view. We now go back to add and connect nodes and add some IOSV nodes, forming our core of the network. We can add other node types by clicking the node type such as ASAV for a firewall or IOSV L2 for a switch. New nodes that are added are automatically snapped to the nearest location of other nodes that are already present. This helps with alignment. We can see here how the nodes that have been added have automatically aligned to the other nodes in the topology. We can add some more nodes now and use Auto Connect to again guess based on the location. If we want to add our own link, we can click on the node to start from and then click on the destination node. By dragging from the start to the end, we can create a new link manually. We can add other node types as well, such as the LXC node. Once we are finished, we can click Finish and Return to leave the Add and Connect node mode. We can now view some summary topology statistics. Hovering over a node in the summary table will show all nodes of that type. It will also provide a list of the nodes in the tooltip. By clicking a node, we get the context menu as shown before. We can hover over an interface in the node summary table to view that interface and its link, or the peer of the interface showing the remote end. We can also rewire interfaces by clicking the plug and then dropping. Here we have swapped interface Gigabit Ethernet 01 and 03. Let's zoom in to make that a little bit clearer. In this example now we'll swap the interfaces on the left, Gigabit Ethernet 02 and 01. They have now been swapped over. This allows us to rebind our topology. We now zoom back out. We can now go into the properties view, which allows us to set properties for the AutoNet configuration engine and basic node properties. Now the configuration tab, if we run AutoNet kit, will show us the configuration. If we've made local edits, it will prompt us if we want to keep the local edits or use the updated config from AutoNet kit. We can edit the configuration in this file. We can also change properties such as the node label, for example, renaming it here and then rerunning AutoNet kit. This will then show up in the configurations tab. If it does not update, we can just click the node and that will then preview it again. We can now see the node name has come through. We can also press enter when we've got a node selected to quickly rename a node. Using this plus the arrow keys to navigate between nodes quickly allows us to rename multiple nodes in the topology. We can now see that node name has changed again in the config generated from AutoNet kit. The editor also provides a lot of selection capabilities. For instance, we can select all nodes and then edit properties for all of the selected nodes. We can also select an individual link 
and have a context sensitive menu providing link actions. Finally, we can select an interface and then set its properties such as the VLAN, IP address or security level. We can click on a node and then use the other selection options such as the inverse to select all the other nodes or inverse again to select itself, to select the interfaces from the node to set properties or perform actions on, to select the node from the interfaces selected, to select the peer nodes of a node or to select the peer interfaces at the remote end from that node. This can be powerful when setting firewalls. We can also select the links from a node, the interfaces from a link, and then the links from a node, etc. This is powerful when setting both the firewall and for the iOS VL2 for VLANs. We can also do some actions such as cloning a node, which will copy the node and its connectivity to its neighbors. This can be useful for setting up multiple things such as servers. Let's add some new nodes to the network to demonstrate this further. We'll add an iOS VL2 switch and an iOS V router. We'll then manually connect them using the add link. The link changes color when we're on a target node. If we release it, it won't connect. Here we can see it's changed to blue and it will create the link. We now finish and return and select the switch. We can use extract nodes which will remove that node but keep the links between all of the nodes connected to it. We can also undo and redo. So now we've cloned the node. We now have two links between the two. We can demonstrate the cloning further here. Cloning is probably most useful for switches rather than cloning routers but it can be applied. Here we're showing the undo and redo, which can be used both through the clicking the button or using the Control Z or Apple Z. Such as using the keys here. We can set topology level properties such as setting Auto Netkit to use dual stack IP addressing. We rerun Auto Netkit and go into a node. And we can see the IP addresses are showing both IPv4 and IPv6 are being configured. We can also change other properties such as the IGP used and rerun Auto Netkit. The Auto Netkit tab shows us the results of the Auto Netkit logs. If we run Auto Netkit again, we'll see a new entry appear in the logs. We can open the topology visualization to show the auto netkit visualizations. This shows us the various views such as the physical, the layer 2 and then the routing protocols. This opens in a new tab. We can select multiple nodes at once using the marquee tool. For instance, we could set IGP or an IBGP value. Here we'll set the IBGP to be route reflector clients and put all of these routers in the same cluster. We'll then select one of these to be the route reflector and view the output on the AutoNet kit topology. We'll rerun AutoNet kit and switch to our other tab and we can see the route reflector clients connecting into the route reflector. We can also perform actions on the links. We can select a link and get the link context menu. This gives us the option to split the link with an unmanaged switch or an IRS VL2 node. What this does is to place that node in between the two endpoints and connect those two endpoints with their same interfaces. If we rerun Auto Netkit now, we will see the configuration generated for this node, the same as if we'd wired it in manually ourselves. We can undo and redo these as before. We could also combine these features together. This demonstrates the power, while it may not necessarily be used in a usual workflow. We can select the links of a node, split those links, and then clone those added nodes. This illustrates the power of this approach to quickly build large topologies. We also have an alignment mode, which can be used to align nodes and distribute them. The alignment itself isn't always required due to the automatic node snapping when adding or moving nodes. 
The horizontal and vertical alignment allow nodes to be distributed equally in the horizontal or vertical directions. Here we're distributing the horizontal nodes equally. This can make for more aesthetically pleasing diagrams. The snap to node feature also applies for moving nodes as well as adding nodes. When a node is added or moved and it aligns with another node in the horizontal or vertical line, it will then snap to that position. An experimental feature in the browser-based editor is the ability to tag nodes. This is in alpha. The tags themselves are not stored to the file, they are only present during the editing session. Here we're taking a group of nodes, some with core, some with firewall, and we can now switch into tag selection mode. This allows us to set a node set. For instance, here we can hover over the nodes and view the nodes that are on the inside, the outside, or on the peers. Similarly, we can view the interfaces that are on the inside, towards the outside, or facing on the outside in. This allows us to quickly set properties. For instance, we could select a firewall and only set the properties on the devices that are facing outside of the cluster or inside of the cluster. This could also be used for VLANs. There's also a tag summary table in which you can hover over a tag and see all nodes with that tag. This is similar to the node statistics piece on the topology. When we are finished, we can now click sync and go back to the user workspace management. We can preview our topology here and see that the file has come across as we created it. We can now launch the simulation by setting a file name and clicking the launch button and then this will launch as per the normal workflow. Here we see our simulation is starting to be launched with all of our nodes, including the node that we renamed to Edge1, are now present. This has been an overview of the Viral browser-based topology editor, which is available in the November 15 release of Viral. We look forward to hearing your feedback and suggestions via our community forums. Thank you.